Hi, welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee. Today we're going to talk about group dynamics. So I am fresh off another exercise, workout, group experience. Uh, This is a new thing for me, you know if you've been listening, that I've talked a little bit about. I started boxing. I'm going to a boxing gym that is CrossFit and training and uh, it's actually a women's boxing group. And uh, so it is just, and it's owned by this, this great family and it's just, it's just amazing. So my coach is like 23 and uh, she's just, she's badass. And I cannot tell you, I have never really understood this whole hey, get up early, go work out before work. Hey, get up early, go to these classes where you're like pushed and people are yelling at you. Come on, you can do it. Go, go, go. You know, kind of like thing like CrossFit and Orange Theory and that kind of heavy duty stuff. Like I never understood that group energy thing that like, let's, let's beat up our bodies. I didn't really get it. Now I get it. I get it. Okay. <laughs> it's not just about it's not like this vanity thing where you just want to look good and everybody needs to exercise and are doing that for other people or for the world or for society or for standards of beauty or health or wellness or fitness. It really is this incredible group dynamic that if you tap into that, it just fills you up. It brings you into this level of thriving Like, I really feel so alive. I feel like I'm a whole new level of clear. I feel like I have clarity. My head is clear. My mind is clear. I haven't felt like this. I don't even know when the last time, if ever, I've ever felt like this. So in the last three days, I've been twice. And the women's boxing club is only on the weekend. So I go Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so... For this is the first time I added Sunday. I just felt like I wanted to try it in the morning and see what was up. So now I get it. So for those of you who I've totally made fun of behind your backs <laughs> for getting up and exercising before you go to work and doing the hardcore thing, I get it now. I get it because it like fills you up with energy and it makes you, it helps you to feel just really present and good and it's not euphoric, really. Like the first time I ever went, it was totally euphoric. And sometimes I can get like this high and I know that it's like endorphins and hormones and all that kind of stuff. I get that that's actually a physiological thing that happens in the body. But today I really felt this group surge, this like vitality that was like the vibration was raised because the people who were there are there because they want to be there. And they're there to be part of a group experience, not just because they can exercise by themselves, but it just holds you. And I was thinking about how the group, the group experience for all of us, it's so essential, especially now. So if you're in a women's group, a women's circle, a prayer circle, if you're in an online group, if you're in a, a workshop or a class or any kind of groups, regardless of what it's for, if it's for your quilting hobby, if it's for a book club, if it's for a wine tasting, if it's for a biking, bicycling club, whatever that is, it, it is so needed. We need the group vitality. We need the group dynamics. We need them. And for so long, it's been something that I think has been kind of forced upon us like when in the educational the traditional educational system at least in the U.S. has been like okay you got to do group projects you got to learn how to get along with other people which usually means you have to learn how to just suck it up and carry the load for people who are lazy because that's how life's going to be that's what the work environment's going to be there's going to be people that are favorites that just get to ride your coattails like there's all this kind of negative I think, thought, um, belief system around group dynamics, in part because it's been forced in ways that are imbalanced and not healthy. And so experiences like this 
give us the opportunity to repattern that, to reprogram that, and to raise our vibration. And by being in a group by choice is different than it kind of being forced upon you, I think, in a learning environment. But but if you think about this in the work environment too, like you have work groups and things like that, and you know it's kind of like that. There are things that you have to just deal with and manage. But what if, what if we could take this concept of groups this concept of teams and teamwork, this concept of family and create something now here at 2023 and moving on that means more, that means more to us in our actual livelihood, in our livelihood. Breathing fresh air into this concept of group, let's connect soulfully. Let's connect energetically. Let's make a choice. Let it, let's let our light bodies meld and blend and vibe together in a cosmic dance party. Let's do that. Don't you want to do that? I know, I know you've had breaks in your trust experiences and relationships and connections in your families of origin, in your workspaces, in your relationships, in your chosen experiences as well. I know, I know there's been breaks in trust. I know that there's been breaches. I know, I know there's leaks. I know you've got some leaks. And I also know that people have taken advantage of your incredible energy and, and your light. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have light, that light is bad, that your energy, your vitality, your essence isn't needed. It is. It doesn't mean it is bad. It doesn't mean that that's the way people hurt you. That's not people's way in to use you or manipulate you. This is a common misunderstanding. This is the over-exaggerated response in your body, in your metaphysical body, to being hurt and understanding a collective wounding around this concept of group, team, family, connection gives you this incredible freedom to release the negative or the bad or the or the old wounds or the old pain points and to allow some room some wiggle room for your spirit your heart your soul and your body to be free from those old restrictions from those old social norms so here and now right here Let's connect. Let's become a group. Let's become a group on Sunday morning coffee. We already are, don't you know? We are all connected in our heart space. We are all empathic connectors. Uh, To the degree at which we are able to actually feel or sense those connections in a positive and hopeful and healthy way is to the degree in which you allow yourself permission to lower your resistance and to embrace your essence. Because your essence, your light is so much more powerful and more profound than any negative energy that could come into your space. But you must believe that to be the truth. So it's not about distrust or betrayal or being heard or being used or abused even. It is about honoring the integrity of yourself and believing that your light and your essence is the it. It is the magic. It is the strength. It is 100% everything. It's everything you need. Nobody can take it away. Only you can turn it down. Only you can withdraw it. Only you can pull it back. And I understand the resistance. (laughs) Oh, I'm the queen of resistance. I know how to use resistance. To avoid, to distract, to not participate, to not show up because it's hard. Yeah, it's fucking hard sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to take a drink of my Dunkin' Donuts coffee this morning. I wish I had a sponsor. Wouldn't that be great? I'm just, I'm drinking my hot coffee after I exercised in, you know, 80 degree weather. It's fine. I'm good. I know. I know I'm okay, you guys. I'm okay. I'm feeling good. Let's have a sip of coffee or tea or whatever it is that you have in front of you. Maybe water. Mm. What I'm trying to say is nobody can take anything from you. That's a myth. 
oh, oh, it feels like it. Oh, yes, it does. And it feels, it sure feels like people just come at you and just give you all their crap. I mean, what, I mean, are you a parent? Are you a mom or a dad? Do you have children? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it feels like you just don't have a choice, right? You just got to take it. You got to suck it up, buttercup. Oh, I hate that phrase, but it's true, right? You've heard this. You just got to deal with it. You just got to hold it in. What does that mean? It means I got to hold it in. I got to take it. I got to take the crap. I got to take the crap. I got to take it. I got to take it. I got to take it. And not only do I have to take it, but I have to protect everybody else in my group. No. Oh, honey, that means martyrdom. Do you understand? I'm going to say this. It's going to hurt some of you. Oh, it's going to hurt some of you. Don't be a martyr. Oh, poor me. A martyr and a victim. Ooh, they are twin flames, you guys. Martyr and victim. Oh, poor you. Because you won't stand in your beautiful light of integrity. When shit happens and it everything sucks and you need to withdraw, you can do that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about going back to your center, coming into yourself, taking a break, taking a respite, doing what you need to do to be healthy. I'm not talking about that. Those are like just self-care, self-love behaviors. What I'm talking about is when you go, oh, you use somebody else and the intensity to which you're feeling other people in your group, in your family, at your work as an excuse to not be yourself as a reason to hide. Ain't nobody can hurt you like you can hurt you. You're going to have to believe this as a fact and as truth as I am sharing it with you because I know it. I have never been more sure of anything in my life that the only person that can hurt you is you. To the depth of what you've been hurt, you are hurting yourself because you continue to play out the blame and the shame, even if you've been perpetrated upon tragically to no fault of your own through abuse, through whatever that is, right? You continue to hurt yourself, punish yourself and hide yourself in a form of survival, in a form of protection. But that's just misunderstanding. You're just misunderstanding. That didn't happen to you because you're so bad or because you're so great that you're shining and you're awesome and you shouldn't be so great. It didn't happen to you because you stood out because of your energy. No. That's not true. That's just a misunderstanding. So in this here now moment, in this group dynamic, stand in your light. Let me see you. I can see you anyway. You get it, right? Like I'm clairvoyant. I can see you. I can see your light. Even if you try to hide it and blame it on X, Y, and Z and the disease or the ailments you have or the horrible life situation you're in right now to no fault of your own that you're handling or dealing with. Do you, do you want me to? Oh, girl, let me tell you. Do you want me to list all the things that are that are happening that I am constantly managing in my life? You would not believe it. The, the therapist, the new therapist I have, she, lo- she looks at me and she's like, oh, like, oh, oh. I said, oh, no, there's more. And I keep, like, I'm just making a list. And I'm like, it, but it's just the way it is. There's always so much going on. There's always drama from other people coming at you. There's always drama around you in your environment. Look at politics. Look at the environment. Look at, you know, there's so much that you can tap into and pull in that why don't we, okay, why don't we start to utilize this? Let's leverage this stuff. Let's leverage all this stuff that's happening and moving and shaking and occurring around us and sometimes to us, at us, as group energy that is just misguided and misdirected. And instead of that kind of group energy and mentality that's amped up, it's like somebody's playing really loud music, mm-mm. then you go to a different place or put your AirPods in and you choose your own station. But use the incredible intensity of the energy that's around you to recognize that there is intensity of energy. Why is there intensity of energy? Because you are intensity of energy. Even if it feels bad or too much, 
it just means you have so much power. You have so much light. You have so much goodness. You have so much peace. You have the opportunity to connect, to love, to grow, to use that energy, to harness all that stuff that's coming in or around you or flowing around you as good and healthy stuff. You can take all this. If you think of everything as energy instead of as good or bad, then you can use all the energy from all the groups that you're in, all the networks you're connected to and harness it. Isn't that what we do like with like solar power, with electricity, with like, isn't that what we do? Like it makes sense, doesn't it? I know there's so much. I know there's a lot. And a lot is good. Do you know why? Because a lot means abundance. It just so happens it might feel like not so great abundance, but it's abundance. It is abundance. So how about you say, okay, abundance. Wow, this isn't exactly what I was thinking, but it gives me the reminder that there's a lot of freaking power with energy, with my essence, and all this emotion that I'm feeling build up inside me based upon this experience that I've had or based upon this memory that I'm recalling and reliving or based upon this concern that I have for my child and a situation they're in or for my spouse or whatever it may be. It's all powerful energy. It's all amplified and supported by the groups that we're connected to, by the grids that we're connected to, by the energy of our family connection. So in our spirit, we are all connected. It doesn't mean you're responsible for everybody else or accountable for everybody else, but you are responsible and accountable for yourself. Always, all the time. You decide what happens to you. You decide what you need to do. If somebody else does something and it's stupid and it affects you and it's not good, you decide what happens after that. You take that energy of that experience and those emotions and you use them for your greatest and highest good. You amplify, you glow, you shine, you embody and encompass the power of the energy from the group and the experience that you've had. Regardless of if it was good or bad, that's a brain thing. That's what the mind is assessing, which helps us, right? That's how we get through the world. But your heart and your soul, my friend, that's where it's at. And that is how we connect to each other. And that is how we support each other. Metaphysically, ethereally, and the energy that you are. Thank you so much for listening today to the Sunday Morning Coffee. As always, I appreciate you. I just am so grateful that you're here with me and that we have this connection, this soulful connection, because we do We are. We're a group here on Sunday Morning Coffee. We're a group here on Above Life Channel. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And I feel you. Just as you can sense and feel me and one another as well. All right. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to go finish my donut and finish my coffee as I'm sitting at the park here. I hope you have a fabulous Sunday. Oh, I know it's a short week, but I do have client appointments available. And just so happens I have another group scheduled for Tuesday. Everybody, anybody can join. It is $40 a person right now. That's all it's, That's all I'm charging for the hour um, that we hang out together. And it's a small group. So there's not more than 12 people in the group. And it is on, the next one is on September 12th, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central Time. Take a look in the notes here in the description of this video and you can see a link to join. It is called the Inspiring Psychic Experience. I do kind of a talk like this, maybe channeling a little bit and then um, bring in some spirit guides and such, have some conversation and then I'll give opportunity for you all to ask questions if you'd like to do that. So thanks so much for listening. I hope I've inspired your spirit today, filled you with hope, just like you fill me with hope. I appreciate you. Remember, this is your life and you get to live it just live it.